Hello, ladies. Good evening. This is 6.40 p.m. in Southern California. My first live broadcast uh, on my YouTube and Facebook uh, page and new personal account. So I'm on three different pages or platforms. Uh, Happy New Year, by the way. This is 2024, can believe. Uh, <laughs> it's already the New Year again. And I haven't been um, doing a lot of live broadcasts as of late for um, a few reasons. Because I found that going online especially on Facebook, no longer serves me that well because I've always been so restricted. And whenever I go online, I barely have any impression or circulation so people don't find me live. And with every life that I, I did, it's only like a handful of you Watching it is a far cry from uh, a few years back before uh, the lockdown, in which I was very active going online a lot, and I had a very uh, um, excited and engaged loyal following. Now, because of the situation with our world, and I am the resident dissident, basically, right, for... Uh, for the establishment, they don't like me. So this is why I got so restricted. So whenever you just tune in, uh, we'll, I will really appreciate if you help by liking it, loving it, sharing it um, on your feed. And maybe just say hi, hello, comment. Uh, if you're live, if you're watching this live, say live if you're watching the recording say recording at any rate i would love uh to hear from you because usually you know during live broadcasts like this i answer questions for you uh, for free so you get free coaching with me which is basically not available uh in the coaching industry free coaching is <laughs> it's not it's not a thing <laughs> Right. When they say free coaching, it's basically a sales pitch. Well, this broadcast will include some sales pitch, of course, because I kind of, I didn't make myself show up, but all of a sudden I felt like, you know, maybe it's a good idea if I just spontaneously showed up and say hello. So I didn't plan it at all out of the blue. I felt like it. And I said, this is probably the time for me just to pop up and say hello to my lovely audience. So um, hopefully there will be questions. If there is no questions, that, that is okay too. Um, but we'll see what happens, right? So because I'm on my uh, new personal account under Karina Pang, if you're not friend with me or under Karina Pang, you can add me as friend. And of course, also follow my Facebook page, which is, I have two Facebook pages at the moment. The main one is Karina Pang Feminine Magnetism. And the newer one is Karina Pang, The Order of the Blue Rose. Uh, those two pages serve two different purposes. You will find out when you follow both of the pages, you'll see the difference. So ladies, uh, either on YouTube or Facebook or my personal page, say hi when you see me live, uh, like, love, and perhaps also share it if you're so inclined. So other uh, women can also benefit from this free broadcast. Anyway, 
So what have I been up to, ladies? Uh, I've been always busy, right, uh, these days, other than my work. I also um, have another project that I need to tend to that up. I probably won't discuss here, but uh, somehow this year, it will become clear what is it that actually Karina Peng is trying to do and who is she, what, is, what has she been doing other than, you know, uh, uh, attending to her coaching business, right? Because uh, some of you might be aware of what, what I've been up to. But today, in particularly, I want to talk about it is because this coming Saturday, I would, uh, I will have a masterclass called um, "Leaning Back: The Lost Art of Seduction." That class, master class, is part of the ongoing feminine magnetism group coaching, which is also now registering for a new round. But I'll talk about it some other time. So because I just want to focus right now about uh, this coming class because it's so important. And also this uh, class is part of the Leaning Back workshop, the Leaning Back and Cultivating Feminine Mystique workshop, which is one of my hit programs that if you sign up uh, for that program, you get to sit on this masterclass for free every day. So usually it runs for two hours. It's a coaching call uh, with this subject and then followed usually by Q&A. My, my class typically runs for two hours. It shows the kind of generosity that Karina Peng is known for. It's unlike what you, you see in, out there, you pay like you pay Tons, tons of money for 40 minutes coaching, 30 minute coaching from whoever it is uh, <laughs> that you sign up, sign up with because uh, a lot of these people really offer value their service. That is my very honest opinion. They overvalue and overestimate themselves thinking that they're worth uh, whatever amount of money they charge, which often, <laughs> causes a lot of their clients to feel very robbed and cheated. You know, they pay premium amount of premium uh, fee for very substandard and, you know, lip service kind of uh, coaching or, or services pretty much, right? So anyway, I'm not going to talk about it today, but I just want you to have a taste of the kind of um, services that Karina Peng over you that I believe really uh, is uh, unrivaled, unrivaled, sorry, unrivaled in the niche um, in terms of generosity and as well as the efficacy of the methodology or the teachings or, or the advice. If you're new to me, uh, I am the specialist of complicated relationships, mainly, you know, uh, the type of relationship that is usually called situationships because it's not a real relationship. <laughs> Haven't really claimed the women, you know, they're dating still casually and the women don't have a clue or, or don't know how to turn this around. I have held such situationships, you know, multiple times throughout my, uh, say, 13, 13, 14 years career. I've been in a business about at least 13, 14 years, right? I've published my ebook in 2012. That is 12 years ago. But before that, I had also started coaching. So the first two years, I guess, I did coach um, without any product. I didn't had I didn't have a book at that time yet, any pro or any product. So I give coaching here and there. You know, my book was published. If it, everything kind of just like um, accelerating in 
in my career and also my life to the point that it was beyond my dreams that from just blogging and producing this little, sorry, this little ebook and coaching my clients. And I didn't even have any like high ticket items at that time. I didn't charge 20, 30, 40, 50,000 typical of uh, the, you know, Ponzi schemers in the, in the industry. Uh, not, not like that. But the, res the result was so astonishing that I, I get to live in this very beautiful home in Southern California near San Diego. Uh, right now it's almost full moon, by the way. <laughs> and next month, February 23rd and 24th, we're going to have a retreat. So if you're interested in my full moon retreat, you can also PM me. It's available every full moon, every month. If you don't want to come during full moon, maybe because of conflicting schedule, you can also suggest me your dates. Then I will adjust to it. But any, anyway, I, I digress. So I am the specialist of complicated relationship as well as feminine magnetism. So any woman who wants to cultivate their feminine energy as well as their feminine magnetism, you really haven't tasted it if you haven't studied it under the living master, awakened one, Karina Peng, the man whisperer, and the last resort. So if it is your first time to see me live or to be in my realm, welcome. Welcome to Karina realm. Welcome to the tribe, ladies. Thank you for being here. So today, I would like to talk about why we ladies, we women, need to lean back with a guy, right? So a lot of, uh, of you maybe already got the basics, the gist of the importance of leaning back because, um, you know, this, is, this principle has been circulating around the last uh, decade and a half or maybe more, right? Um, so a lot of women are already familiar about the concept of leaning back. But I do believe that I was the one who perfected it to the point that it became such, uh, such a tool that was so effective, that was so seductive, that was so um, magnetizing that a lot of men who were uh, initially very shy about commitments, right? They, they were too scared about committing to a woman. And some strung along the women for many, many years. One of my clients, even like 20 years together, and he never claimed her. And now they're married, by the way. So, um, and then of course, uh, the reason for that was because the women also don't understand. The more you try to secure commitment from a guy, uh, the more uh, shy he will become, the more uh, timid uh, he will show up in the relationship because he feels so pressurized. So it's not how you um, inspire to want to marry you or to commit to you give you the kind of relationship you want. And uh, so the only way for you to attract masculine men, because a lot of us want masculine men, correct? We want a man who polarizes our core energy. So as a, we, as a woman, you know, Usually, not always, but usually our core energy is feminine energy. Even though we are in a dog-eat-dog -dog world, we, um, we together with men compete in the, uh, sort of in the workplace, in the world, right? Uh, but when it comes to romance, when it comes to relationship, we want to be wooed and cooed. We want to be pursued, right? We want to be courted. 
and it's it proves to be difficult for a lot of women uh, especially you know strong successful career women who are so used to in the go getting mode when they were uh, at work to switch to the feminine energy mode which is just very passive and and receptive basically to the uninitiated leaning back is just basically you're waiting around for a get, for a guy to make a move and it is honestly very frustrating and it is if you don't understand why it's so important and it, leaning back hasn't been a second nature to you it is indeed very frustrating to lean back meaning just to do nothing Hi, I see Natalia. Natalia, hi. How are you, babe? Long time no see. By the way, Natalia is one of my earliest clients. And not long after she found me, she married um, her current deceased husband. So I'm so sorry about that, Natalia. So they got married, <laughs> unfortunately. You know, God had a different plan. So he passed a few years ago. But anyway, Natalia, thank you for being here. Long time no see. One of my success stories is here. <laughs> All right. So where were we? So I was talking about actually how I perfected leaning back, right? So at that time, I didn't even know the principle of leaning back myself. So I learned from other people, right? Same thing. Uh, but at the same time, I also learned about other aspects of, you know, the feminine energy uh, sort of uh, talking points that was that were very popular at that time. One of them, for example, were uh, was feeling messages. Again, um, I'm not saying that feeling messages are entirely wrong, but the way uh, that it was thought at that time was giving the impression to to all the women who studied is that they they were supposed to air their feeling 24/7 so i was one of the those women who who did you know religiously <laughs> did the feeling messages thing right so I, i felt this i felt that whenever i felt annoyed or angered about something i always quick to express it because we were taught as long as you say it in feeling messages meaning in the I feel terms, not using you, it should be okay. Well, it turned out to be, I was among the probably the thousands or millions of women who found out for ourselves that feeling messages the way we expected it didn't really work. So then, you know, I was kind of, uh, trying other means to crack the code. How do you really make a guy, you know, to become the man that you want, right? That that, that was the, the kind of uh, frame of mind or reference that I was using at the time that, you know, I should be able to make a man do something for me if I just know the technique. Don't you all think that way? Natalia, don't you all think that, that as well <laughs> didn't work right Hans that's why you you come and found me and then you met Kevin and then you guys got married not long after and throughout the years you 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 guys were really just one of my you know uh, favorite couples because you you're very friendly so anyway go back to uh Leaning back, so it was already taught, but not in the way that I taught it a few years later after I uh, published my ebook in 2012. Then I started uh, creating a program. The first one was Journey Inward. And then, not long after Journey Inward, I started uh, creating another program, which was, which proved to be very popular among the ladies called. The Leaning Back and Cultivating Feminine Mystic Workshop. So this program is so popular among my clients. It has helped restore the very imbalanced relationship that my clients went through 
right? And then sort of reignite uh, the dimming passion between uh, between the couple, between the partners in the relationship, and also for for those of you who always dated unsuc unsuccessfully because probably you didn't know you know how to really maintain attraction with the guys that you became so attached to right and then you had no idea what you needed to do in order for him to step up to the plate and uh, invest more in the relationship and the way you went about it was you talking uh, and telling him what to do or when you have come to this sort of uh, relationship uh, coaching realm, then you realize that didn't work, then you switch to feeling messages. I've done that. Oh, at first, just saying it outright, direct, using you, 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 didn't work. Now I was being told that using the I statement, consisting of I feel this way, I feel that way, it will work. So a lot of this we mean switch from talking direct to talking indirect, and turns out to be both didn't work. <laughs> so the feeling messages didn't didn't work either, right? So and then because of that, I was kind of like meditating on on, on how are you going to sort of communicate to a guy in a way in a way that he will not mistake our desire and our intentions and our misgivings. And I cracked the codes pretty much that with, with men, you really don't need to, to be so verbal. Of course, you can communicate now and then, but the thing is with women, they don't only communicate once or twice. They keep going on and on. They keep going on every two weeks, every month, six months, right? So it's not a one or twice thing. It's an ongoing thing. Now with the feeling messages, it's even worse because everything that bothers you, you're going to just project it out there with the feeling messages, which makes the relationship even worse. So then, you know, I came up with this program, which was quite a hit. And then it helps self a lot of relationships. Some, uh, some <coughs> got back with their exes and improved their relationship to the point that they got married not long after the breakup. So then I began to get all these sort of testimonial in here. So the story of my career is never really like what is being taught out, right? Everything is just fell onto my lap. So all of a sudden, you know, I got all these unsolicited testimonials from a lot of my clients um, saying, oh, my God. And I didn't expect that at all, at all. So I didn't know that my advice really worked that well. So when I started to get all these sort of unsolicited, unsolicited heartfelt testimonials from my clients, they were all so nicely written from the heart, very detailed how... You know, my teachings help them. Um, <coughs> basically, it's almost just like a course in itself. My <coughs> my clients sort of, uh, you know, outline all these specific points why their relationship didn't work and how my advice fix all that just like almost overnight, right? So because those testimonials is just so gold, I had to compile them and actually I, I I turned it into a book called the Rose the Road to Goddesshood and I I sell it only for $27 so if you haven't got any product from me you might to get that small ebook uh, so basically just the lesson from my clients how uh, my principles help fix their broken relationships so by just reading those testimonials ladies you you can also relate to a lot of things that you have done in your relationship, all the mistakes that you have made in your relationship. And you can fix them according to uh, almost the prescriptions of my clients gave. Not necessarily from me. They come up with those prescriptions themselves after practicing what I teach. It's a, 
it's kind of it's a hood in a way because I was so surprised by 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 the responses I got. So again, if you want to get the ebook, it's only twenty seven dollars. You if you don't know me and new to me, you might want to start there. Or you also and you also want to have my main ebook, uh, which is he's really that in he he is he's really that into you. He's just not ready, right? Because a lot of us being told by a lot of generic uh, generic de dating advice out there, for example, if a guy says, you know, he, he doesn't want a relationship, that means he doesn't want a relationship with you and he will never commit to you. That is the kind of advice you get out, out there, correct? Well, Karina Peng has proven that wrong many, many, many times. Doesn't matter what the guy says, if he shows up as a magnetizing goddess with your feminine magnetism, any guy who finds you attractive won't be able to resist you. That is what the point that I'm going to bring home in my master's master class this coming Saturday. That is why we need to lean back. Uh, why leaning back is actually very seductive and you don't have to do anything you don't have to uh you know seduce in a way like tem tem a man well, you can do that too if you want of course you know but really you don't need to overdo to become all this like oh like overly sensual woman it's not about that in fact right isn't it interesting so just by leaning back, you pretty much can restore the imbalances or the depolarization of your relationship. What is the depolarization? A man who leans back in the relationship, meaning that he hasn't stepped in and stepped up, giving you what you want, hasn't really uh, been pursuing you. You know, he's in a relationship with you, but, you know, it feels blah to you because he feels like he, he hasn't really pursued you in months, for example. That is, why do you think that is? That is because there is not enough polarity in your relationship. How does that happen? It happens because a lot of women unwittingly depolarize their relationship with a man by assuming the masculine role, to them that it's it's uh, you know it's it's not uh, it's not a big deal, right? Oh, I just do this. I just call now. It's not really a big deal. I let me text, you know. Let me thank thank him for what he does, which is a great thing to thank him. This and and then you overdo it, and you pretty much always initiate, always trying to nudge him to do something with you, to plan for a date, this and that. Or if he doesn't, then you, the, the one who plans a date and execute it, and some even worse, pay for it. And then the next thing you know, you know, the guy who was originally very white hot for you, now he's just like sitting on his ass, doing absolutely nothing and just kind of waiting around for you to make a move because you set the tone of the relationship by assuming the masculine role. That is why. Then this is why we need to lean back, right? In Leaning back will give you clarity because leaning back will lead guys who are really not serious about you, who are really not uh, very compatible with you, meaning that they are not very decisive. They're waiting for you to make the first move. They're waiting for you to make the decision which, uh, what to do on your dates, where to go, where to eat. So, so it, the kind of guy who just waits and see, right? <coughs> so you with that kind of, we call them better guys. But generally speaking, maybe they're not better, better, but they are just, not firm in their masculinity or not firm in their masculine energy for whatever reason, or guys who are just not very attracted with you. But it's okay, I meaning that they enjoy being with you, they enjoy having sex with you, obviously, right? And then they also love. So it's it's a, 
it's a great deal for them to be able to have sex with you <laughs> while at the same time being single, right? <laughs> so leaning back will fix that problem. And if you're already in a relationship, for example, or married, and your husband hasn't been really the one who leads the relationship, leaning back will restore that. And then, but then you ask, what if, Kat, if it's not working? Leaning back always works, ladies, even when it's not working. What do you mean, Kat? If it's not working, it's not working. Well, if the definition of working to you means that, you know, you're going to end up marrying the guy, then yes, leaning back works to weed, to eliminate that guy because it's going to waste your time. So you get closer to the one, right? So by leaning back, you're weeding the bad apples. How is that not working? Yeah, you're not, it's not working with that particular guy because he's not attracted enough to you or he's not single or he's attached or he's rebounding or has baggage of some kind with the with previous relationship or, or with the axis. That's why probably move forward no matter how far you lean back. But what lean, leaning back gives you is the absolute clarity where the guy is at energetically. And you only know a guy's intentions when you lean back. If you lean back, he leans back, then you know his intentions. He just wants, you know, uh, to have a good time every now and then when, when he feels like it. So you're an option to him. Gives you clarity, doesn't it? Isn't it better rather than being strung along because you are the one who always asks for a date, calls him, goes to his place, you know, call, uh, text him. You always initiate everything. So you never really know his intention. Right? So again, leaning back always works. The result though, not necessarily what you want with any particular guy, but it always works. Because if he's not the right guy, then you know for sure he is not for you. Instead of the alternative in which you chase the guy and he, he plays along with you because he, he's got, you know, the wonderful sex without committing. Why not? Absolutely. Any guy would find that it's quite a deal. <laughs> so you don't want that. I'm not saying that, you know, you should with, withhold the sex. That wouldn't work either. So what really works is what I teach. Okay. Leaning back. If it's done as a second nature, meaning it has to be accompanied by other things that you are also doing, namely that you have passion in life, right? If you just lean back, but you have nothing that uh, interests you in life, you're just going to sit around waiting for him to call you, to text you, to ask you out. Sooner or later, you're going you're gonna to explode in anger because you feel so neglected. And especially like a lot of women, oh, I, I want to be loyal and faithful. I cannot date other guys. I'm already, I'm a, you know, one man kind of woman. I'm already dating this guy I happen to really like. I don't want to mess it up by seeing other guys. Little, little did you know, by being faithful to a guy who is not ready to commit to you, you are in fact pushing him away from you. Because your energy will become so anxious, right? Full of expectations. And then when those expectations are being, aren't being met, then you less out. You're getting angry and you getting really insecure. That turns off his attraction toward, toward you further. This is the reason why a lot of women find me. Because their ways haven't worked. Does that make sense, ladies? So... Leaning back always works if you have passion in life other than man and relationship. And you also have the right mindset that you're not going to get ahead with 
uh, with any guy, meaning that, you know, he has to come first emotionally before you. And you can only do that when you assume the feminine role of respond, responding only, meaning not initiating, not investing, more than he does, definitely. Maybe once in a while, yeah, you, you, you emotionally. But it's always at par with the, the amount of investment that he does for you and in the relationship. And probably, you know, a level below, not, not, at, not the same, but a level below, right? In every way. So let him lead, let him decide the pace of the relationship. And you can only do that when you are not attached, meaning that you are still rotating and seeing other guys. And you also have passion in life that sort of uh, channel your psychic energy away from your obsession, away from the man, right from the guy to your project, your hobbies, your business, whatever it is that excites you about life, right? And then pretty much by just doing that, you lean back, you allow a man to show up as he is in the relationship while you're deciding is he going to work for me in the long run? Right? For example, if you want a provider, instead of getting around it like a lot of women, by telling a man, look, you know, I need you to do this, to do that, to buy me this, to buy me that. I don't want it. So it's a lot of verbal sort of negotiations going on before a guy even already arrives emotionally. Remember, the key for a man to pursue you, to want to be with you, to claim you, to marry you, he, he needs to court you. Meaning that to court somebody is basically, you know, to persuade somebody, to convince somebody, correct? So if you already arrived before him, there is no need for him to court you. This is very subtle. And only one coach teaches you this in a way that, that gives so much clarity. Her name is Karina Tang. So in order for a man to court you, you have to be the one who is slower in arriving emotionally. In a lot of cases, unfortunately, it is quite the opposite. It is the woman who arrives first before the guy, and now she's busy making the guy to like her more or to be on the same page by leaning forward, by convincing, nudging, telling him what to do, and so forth and so on. That helps not to work. Right? Say you want a provider. So, in your ways of doing it, you're going to basically give a guy a lesson, a sermon on how to be a provider. And when he is kind of like, you know, when a guy being told what to do, usually, you know, they don't want confrontation, right? They, they kind of just, uh, uh, what do you call it? Not really reacting, not really saying anything, but also not very responsive, right? Sort of very quiet maybe. And then, Next thing you know, they pull back, right? They you you don't hear from them for like a week, <laughs> don't see them for about a month. <laughs> that 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 is a, a typical case with with a lot of my clients, right? Because you talk too much, <laughs> you express yourself too much. So it's also a point that I will discuss that Carrie Napping doesn't teach you not to talk. Carrie Napping just teach you teaches you to talk less to talk more with your energy, your feminine energy, not so much verbally, but with your feminine energy. This is again, a very subtle point that not many coaches understand. So I really want you to uh, delve into this HIT program and sit in my masterclass as an extra of everything that I've already taught in the Leaning Back workshop. If you just want to sit in the class without the program, 
It's only $222. You can PM me or comment and I can, you know, send you an invoice, get your email and send you an invoice for the class alone. But I really suggest you to take the entire program. The entire program is only $499 and you get that class for free and my coaching call for free as well. Plus another bonus valued at $107 called Goddess Interview. So I have uh, like four series or five series of Goddess Interviews consisting of four interviews each. So like I have 20 Goddess Interviews you can choose from. So you, you pick one Goddess Interview. So Goddess Interview is basically the interviews of my successful clients. So you get to learn uh, their challenges and how they overcome those challenges. So now they are married to the guy or they get their exes back or they get the, you know, the relationship they want. Some of them got the engagements and so forth and so on. If you tell me your story, I can pick the one interview that suits your situation the most. So 107 plus 222 is 329 $329 worth uh, of bonuses for a program that is $499. So I really suggest you take the entire program and it's only available until this Saturday. So I know it's kind of last minute. It's Thursday today, so Friday tomorrow and Saturday. The next day is the last day you would get uh, the bonus masterclass okay ladies so uh in order for you for example i keep getting distracted hi marie i see you uh, marie are you still here thank you for being here uh, in order for you to get a provider for example how do you lean back and get a provider well by leaning back the guy will have to be creative meaning that if he is a provider type, by the way, let me help my dog out of the house. You want to go with me? Go and come back, okay? Go. So if you lean back, Guys who are used to providing or have the inclinations to provide will naturally do it for you without you having to say anything. So now you know, you dated a few guys at the same time, right? Say, uh, Brian is a provider type. Uh, Jim is a Peter Pan type. And then there is uh, another guy is more uh, elusive type. And then this, the other guy is a flamboyant uh, playboy type. So, you know, you can feel the different energies from how these men show up in your relationship and in, in, in the, your dating life, not relationship necessarily because it's casual, right? And what you need, as, need to do as a woman is just lean back and observe. See how they're doing it. And then now you know. If you want a provider, you will not go for the Peter Pan type, you know, who tends to just like, hey, why don't you come over for Netflix and chill, never take you out on a date and so forth and so on. You know what I'm saying? So instead of dating a guy, because you already saw hook on him from the get go. Uh, and so you date him exclusively, you refuse rotation and you start sort of uh, twisting his arms to do things the way you want him to do. You want him to spend money on you, to take you on vacation, this and that, which um, usually when you are nagging about it, they, they don't want to do that either. So meanwhile, because you are so already attached to this guy because you have no options, you know, he is just sitting on his ass, not giving you what you want, and you're getting more and more bitter because of that. You know what I'm saying? And then you look for relationship advice when your relationship is pretty much already dead, not going anywhere. But K 
Karina Natang has been proven also to help that that kind of relationship, the one that is pretty much that stagnant. And how how does she do it by teaching you how to lean back the proper way? So I perfect the principle of leaning back. So in order for you to really get what I'm trying to say, there is no other way than sitting in my master class master class this coming Saturday at 2 p.m. EST or noon PT. Hold on, my dog. <laughs> I'm back. So sitting in that master class as well as enjoying the entire program of the Leaning Back and Cultivating Feminine Mystic Workshop that also include two uh, Leaning Back and Feminine Mystic Meditations that will help we, uh, sort of condition your mind before any date with a guy so you become so calm, mesmerizing, magnetic. That is the, the kind of thing that Karina Peng teaches to to the hilt, really to excellence, like nothing else <laughs> in the coaching industry. All right. So this is why, you know, she's she's really gives the most uh, ROI or return on investment in the niche. I have no doubt about that. I give the best, highest ROI return on investment. All right, ladies, do you have any question? By the way, I just see the moonlight outside. I want to show you, ladies. While waiting for your questions, if you have an, any. So I want to show you the, uh, the full moon. Can you see? Oh, you see the moon there? Let me turn on the slide. Yeah, you see the full moon, ladies. So I would like to invite you as well to come to the retreat. It's basically a mini retreat uh, consisting for uh, at least, or not at least, maximum four people. So there, there the moon. Four people, max. The investment is 2,999. And it's a two full day at my home. And you, you gotta <coughs> sleep in my guest bedrooms. I have three guest bedrooms. So ideally we have three people maximum. So each person can stay in one bedroom. I'm gonna show you the bedroom. So you get to sleep in my house, in my beautiful cellars. I call it celestial home in San Diego. Ooh, sit dark. Okay. One, this is one of the three bedrooms. So one of you can sleep here. It's interesting. Uh, And this is the second bedroom. Let me, let me turn off the turn off light. Mm. 
one of you going to stay in this honeymoon suite. It'd be a honeymoon suite. Let me get this on as well. There you go. This beautiful honeymoon suite with an attached bathroom. It's a beautiful bathroom too. Get your own bath there. And the third bedroom. Here, it's dark here. Can't be bothered to turn the lights. Anyway, so ladies, so I have opening every month pretty much. If you cannot come February, you can come any, you can suggest weekend or weekdays. It's going to be two full day all the transmission of my sacred teachings, right? Um, so hopefully you got the inspirations that you need that you're going to bring home to your relationship and make it infinitely better while having a great time uh, uh, in my beautiful home, being wine and dine, as well as frolic and singing in a hot tub, whatever you want to do, okay? Right, so do you have any question before I end? So on Saturday, I will delve into why um, winning back is really the lot of seduction meaning that a lot of women already lost in lost sight of this uh, one thing that makes them very young as a woman, which is just their feminine energy of receptivity. Because it is very confusing. How can you, know, you attract a man if you don't do anything? <laughs> Throughout my life, in fact, when you stop trying to do anything, that is when men... Um, begin to really form around you. Isn't it ironic? Anyway, hi, Tra Tracy. It's good to see you here. If someone hasn't been with their ex in over a year, is there hope? There is always hope, Tracy. I have helped so many women get back with their exes. Some, actually, um, one of them, and unfortunately, she also passed a few years ago, she got her, ask her husband back after they divorced for over five years. And actually, he remarried another woman. <laughs> yes. He remarried another woman. They divorced for over five years. She could never forget how much he, she still loved him. And she was sitting in, in Leaning Back Workshop at least three times, I believe, at that time. Like... Uh, so she attended all my programs. She was on, uh, uh, what do you call it? Disability, right? She, she, she didn't even have the money, but she was on disability. But also because I charge not like an, a, like an arm for coaching, only a few hundred dollars here and there. So she always sat on my new cycle of new program. And then not long after, she was back together with her ex-husband and remarrying him it was just like one of the miraculous stories that my clients told me that beyond my wildest dream so tracy yes depending on what your situation is if you want to talk to me about it giving me detail of your relationship with uh, with your man then yeah i can give you my assessment but there is no situation is no, no situation to complicate it for carry nothing because he is really the genius of the niche I have this sort of understanding of uh, human nature, human psychology, especially male psychology. So when you understand that, everything is just very easy. Hi, Jen. 
So good to see you here. What about when a man gets overwhelmed with work life, ex-wife, kids, and says he can't focus on our relationship right now? Yes, Jen, I'm aware that you are seeing a guy that you really uh, adore, but he's always stand offish with you, correct? So yeah, absolutely. I've I've dealt with so many type of men who are for whatever reason, it's just not very uh strong in their de in their desire to cement that relationship with you and i would i would love the bottom of it why certain men are like that but also at the same time you know i would like to instill some sense in you jennifer that you are so so it you are the it woman you are the it girl no need to want something from a man who cannot give to you if you are firm on that as well, you will become such a magnetic invitation to a guy to win you. Okay, so there is something probably not quite uh, click yet in the equation. Well, I understand you You both are spending a lot of time together and uh, are fair, quite connected, correct? But somehow he hasn't claimed you or something he's always talking about how he's not ready or not uh, really desiring commitment or relationship, anything like that. Trust me, ladies, a lot of men are like that. For whatever reason, maybe they've been, uh, you know, they've been burned before <laughs> in, the, in the past, right, with the relationship they had in the past, or they're not on the, in the head space to want to sort of uh, pursue another relationship because they have teenage daughters or sons that need their attention, whatever their reasons are. They always seems like have something that to you, why does it matter? So, okay, you, are, you, are, you have a teenage son or daughter. You know, how is it the relationship with me sort of stops you from, you know, having a relationship with your teenage son or daughter? Sometimes we, we want to argue, like, right? Something like that because it doesn't make sense. Yeah, Jan say I'm tired of being patient. Yes, claim, but he gets overwhelmed a lot. Well, Jen, so we need to talk further. How often is the frequency of your togetherness? So you get claim, meaning you know you are the girlfriend now, but you're still not happy. What is it that you are not happy about? A lot of women have an idea that relationship need to be this need to be that not that it's necessarily wrong but sometimes you know the impatience get the better of them meaning like just because i want it now doesn't mean it has to happen all at, at the same time now you know what i'm saying there are still aspects of the relationship that that make the relating worthwhile am i correct jennifer so why is it that you are so adamant this is not enough for me? I need to hear more of that as well. So sit in this um, uh, this coming Saturday, Han. I would love to see you there. Live coaching call, right? And then we will we, we'll be going tweak that one aspect, whatever that is, that is preventing him from wanting to, you know, sort of have a uh full on relationship with you we see each other a lot and yes i'm impatient almost 3 years so isn't it what relationship is all about you spend time a lot of time together so then how is it how is it you that you're not happy you see what i'm saying because i'm not the one who is really in your body you know, experiencing the relationship. Sometimes I don't understand what, you know, I do understand, but also, okay, now you're the girlfriend. You see each other a lot, but still not enough. So what is it that makes it enough that he marries you, that he proposes? Well, you know, your dating is uh, early enough. It's like three years. I mean, it's medium uh, length, not too long, but not too short as well. But it's still, you know, within the reasonable time frame that you're still dating. I mean, still having a, as a girl relationship as a girlfriend and boyfriend in three years. 
So why is that not enough, Jennifer? So I need to know, we, we're gonna go deeper than that. We, we're gonna talk about why is it, what do you need from him to make you feel secure in the relationship? Probably that's the, the kind of question I need to ask you. Okay, any other questions, ladies? If not, then I guess we, we'll see if there is a message on my page. Oh, what do you, this is from Marie. What do you think about the no self technique in relationship? The no self technique, in, oh, it works. That if you have no self, meaning you have no ego, you pretty much a very powerful human being. Authentic power actually comes from uh, uh, comes from egolessness, from selflessness. It sounds kind of like lofty. I understand because probably you know it's not a subject that is commonly discussed outside the spiritual spirituality realm, right? But if you really uh, delve into my journey inward, you will understand better what egolessness means, right? Egolessness doesn't mean that you don't have no ego whatsoever. No, I don't mean it that way. But egoless selflessness is, you know, the fact that you are not spending inordinate amount of time worrying about yourself. Egolessness is. You're not very self-absorbed. Not very, it's like everything revolving around the I stories. That's what being egoful, right? It's always about mine and myself and my sob stories. All these stories that you believe as the absolute truth that pretty much limits you. Okay. Yeah, no self pretty much help in every aspect of life and especially in relationship, Marie. Marie, I would love to have you in, in the retreat on, on February because you said you're interested in it. So I'll, I'll explain it better in the hot tub. How's that? And thank you so much for the star, hon. I appreciate that. So, and this is from, Marie, thank you. This is from Desi Ray. Uh, the guy I dated, three dates, he didn't respond after my leg. I leaned back, maybe too much. No, Desiree, don't, don't think that. You already, basically the last person who texted, and he didn't even respond to that, right? So just wait until he said something. What's so difficult? I, I understand. This is one of the major hurdles in leaning back. Right when there is enough uh, time lapse in between of your communication, you begin to get really antsy. So what is the freaking problem of just shooting a text saying hi or how are you, are you doing or sending a meme or something funny or song? Right, that's it, right. This this often getting really really frustrating and annoying to a lot of the ladies. What's the problem, God? We haven't, he hasn't reached out in two weeks. Well, so he hasn't reached out in two weeks. And you are the one who, why do you think that is? He hasn't reached out. If he wants to reach out, can he just do that very easily? So what is your excuse? The fact that he hasn't reached out in two weeks. You're already worrying about the fact that you haven't reached out. Do you understand? When a, when a woman starts thinking that all responsibility of making the relationship move somewhere is on all on her shoulders, then there is something missing in that, meaning that you really don't uh, understand the principles at work here and, and also why a guy doesn't reach out to you. A guy doesn't reach out to you not because he's too shy or he's testing you because he is 
uh, he doesn't uh, he's not brave enough to ask you out again it's none of that he doesn't reach out maybe because he's busy typically he also sees other women, right so he wants to be basically you know make sure that you know his slots are filled accordingly without any interference or any conflict that causes drama you understand the motivation <laughs> so he's facing you in other words he doesn't feel the urge to talk to you because if he does he's already in your face as simple as that so there is not not so so much mystery with a guy okay so maria asks if you lose the self is it easier to lean back absolutely the fact that a lot of women cannot lean back is because they are so busy in their heads. In their heads, it's always talking and thinking about themselves, worrying about themselves, their self-image, and so forth and so on. And the more they think, you know, the more reactive they become. Because whatever held in your mind for any lengthy period of time, sooner or later, will get projected outside. Correct, Marie? Yes, absolutely. The more ego you have, the more torturous a relationship is because a relationship is a breeding ground for all your egoic problems to manifest, to show up and manifest. Okay. So this year I say it's been over a week, close to two weeks. So I should downgrade him and shouldn't reach out to him. Don't worry about it. You shouldn't do anything. You just keep dating other guys. As if this guy doesn't exist unless he's in, in your proximity. Can you adopt that such a stance that unless a guy is in your life, he doesn't really exist? Really? As simple as that. So yeah, he wants to come and, you know, sort of get in out as he pleases. He's, he can, but... I don't promise I would always be around. That's all. This is from Mila. Hi, dear cat. Please, could I ask? Uh, I just get married. Oh, congratulations! For a few weeks ago, and we we are in different countries. It's not easy. I'm struggling about his lo loyalty. He is not often available at evening. I'm feeling very lonely. We've been talking about, but he didn't change much. So, uh, best regards. Mila, where do you live? What do you mean? You married, but you don't live together. How come a husband not available in the evening? So, I need more information, Mila. And this is why, please, if you sign up for the program, I can help you better this coming Saturday. When you give me the entire detail of your marriage, how come you are married but not living together? Uh, and which country are you in? What kind of culture? How long have you? How long have you been married? So forth and so on. Oh, thank you so much for the star. That is so sweet. It's so sweet. Thank you. Uh, I would like to be able to help. Uh, Mila, so PM me after the class, give me the detail, and then sign up for the leaning back and also the master class. If you cannot afford the, the entire program, just the master class for only 220. I would go for that. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there a question I can address? No more question, ladies. Hi, Anna or oh, Tracy. What time is the class? Uh, the class will be at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or noon, uh, which is 11, not noon. 11 a.m. Pacific Time or 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Saturday. So I give the link for, to sign up. And hello, Anna. Uh, thank you for being here. If there is no more question, ladies, I'm gonna see you in the masterclass this coming Saturday. Yay! Oh, 
here, Mila. I'm in Norway. He's still in Africa. We wait for the visa. I know him for eight months. Oh, my God. So it's a long-distance marriage because he is in Africa. Have you ever met before, Mila? Marie, just stay, be stay beautiful with you too as well. And I hope to see you next month at my home. Mila, uh, so you, you know him for eight months. I need detail, right? So let's, let's talk through um, PM and then hopefully I'll see you this coming weekend for the class and I will help you there. Thank you so much for being here, ladies. I appreciate you being here. And hopefully I'll, I'll do it more often this year, right? Um, maybe um, showing up on my personal page, it does help too. Thank you so much anyway. And have a great weekend wherever you are. And happy full moon. Bye for now.